Well, you'd better. Yeah, I had better. You had better stop looking so beautiful so often. That is not what you came in here to say. No. Come on, we better get to the front are door. Are you really sure? Now, we are not going through that anymore. I want you with me. You belong there. Actually, this party will prove to you and to my friends that you do belong there. I thought it was for political purposes. Selfish motives, purely selfish motives. I'm out to make you forget every other man in your life. That should be easy. There have been none. None? None. No big, blonde, handsome farm boy from Minnesota? I think you'd better greet the guests. All right. Hey. What's wrong? You didn't answer me. Answer you? No. I asked if there was any big, blonde, handsome farm boy from Minnesota. You mean, is he still there? I mean, was he ever there? Yes, you go. Mrs. Burks, good to see Glenn. you both. You know Miss Holstrom. How do you do? do you? Indeed I do. How are you, young lady? Oh, very well. Congratulations on your victory in the primary. Well, thank you, my dear. I'm sure you will go all the way. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you, my dear. Very good. Good evening. Good evening, Glenn. Ambassador Gray, how are you, sir? Do you know Miss Holstrom? A pleasure, Miss Holstrom. It's a great pleasure for me, Ambassador. I've heard much of your fine work in the Middle East. It's a privilege to have you here. I would have been here sooner had I known about you, my dear. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, Millie, would you put the coats in Mr. Morley's study? Oh, yes, Mr. Katie. Lindstrom. Katie, this is Mr. Lindstrom. He just got into Washington this morning, so I thought I'd invite him over here tonight. <laughs> sent for the doctor. He'll be here very soon. Oh, no, I'm just fine. Fine? You frightened us all half to death. Well, what happened? Nothing. Nothing? You went down as if you'd been hit with an axe. Was it the excitement? Yeah, I suppose it was the excitement. Well, Mr. Morley, please go back to your guests and apologize for oh, me. Nonsense. You're going to relax until the doctor gets here. Oh, but I... Orders. I'll send someone up to keep you company. Oh, I'd rather be alone. Well, all right. Oh. By the way, Mr. Lindstrom said he hopes you get better. He said it's the first time anybody ever fainted at the sight of him. <laughs> well, it was just a joke. Yeah, just a joke. A joke. A joke. A joke. What did you say his name was, Papa? Lindstrom, Mama. Oh, Lindstrom. It's a good name for a minister. Yeah, Mama. And he comes today to visit. Oh, we will make him feel good and welcome. Good and welcome, Mama. He has fine wife and fine big boy, too, Katie. Yeah, oh, Papa. Oh, Mama, may I wear my new blouse? Uh, I think so. <laughs> Mama. A new blouse used for a visit from minister? Yeah. You're not the only one that hears that the minister has a fine big son. Son? Him or Mama Katie is only 14 years old. She's little girl. Well, little girl looks at young boy and all of a sudden she's little woman. <laughs> I drink coffee. Twice a week, I drink coffee. 
Yeah? Yeah. My mama says soon I'm old enough to drink it three times a week if I put much sugar and milk in the cup. How old are you? For, uh, 16. <laughs> I think you're at least 18. Yeah, you do. You really do. Oh, sure. You're him, well, 18. <laughs> oh, my. Well, why do you think I'm 18? Well, uh, uh, you're much mature. Yeah, well, it is true. I could tell. And most girls who drink coffee are 18. Yeah, well, that's why I start so young, because I'm so mature. <laughs> uh, you are the most mature girl I ever did see. I hope I meet more girl like you and I get to college soon. You're going away? Yeah, September. State University. Oh. Katie. Yeah, Papa? Mama would like you to help her and Mrs. Lindstrom in the kitchen. I'm going to show Reverend Lindstrom the barn. Yeah, Papa. Gunnar, I have a fine daughter, yeah? Yeah, Mr. Holster. And she's big for 14, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Katie, I, I still think you are much more old. And when I get back from college, you will be much more old. And, and, and we can go out and... and uh, and drink coffee together. You will wait? Oh, you're gonna. I will wait. I will wait. I will wait. Oh, yeah, I will wait. You want money? Yeah. How much? One dollar. Why? For lipstick. Lipstick? But you don't wear lipstick. It's not for me. It's for Katie. Katie? Yeah. Little Katie need lipstick? Yeah, Papa. After all, I am 15. <laughs> oh, how much? Two dollars. What for? For bra. Bra? <laughs> but you have much new bra. For Katie. Katie? Yeah. Little Katie? Yeah, Papa, after all, I am 16. <laughs> <laughs> how much? Twenty dollars. Twenty dollar? We got to stop her from growing. It's not for growing. It's for a new dress for Katie. Twenty dollars for one dress for little Katie? Papa, it's for my 17th birthday party. Party? Oh, party will cost much money. Papa, Gunnar Lindstrom is home for a visit from college, and he is coming here to the party. Oh, I see now. Thank you, Papa. Your guests will be here soon, Katie. It's time to stop primping. Yeah, Mom. I think you better. Already, Gunnar Lindstrom is coming up the path. Oh! <laughs> Gunnar. Hello, Katie. I'm happy to see you after such long time. Oh, uh, Katie Holstrom, this is Mildred Farnham, good friend from school to come to visit and meet parents and friends. Hi. Hello. Uh, is uh, getting cold out, Katie? Oh, yeah. Well, come in, please. Good evening, Mrs. Holstrom. Good evening, Gunnar. Cheryl. Oh, Mama, I waited because he asked me to. He asked me to wait. You want something to eat, Katie? No, Mama. Look, Katie, here is money. For what, Papa? Not for new lipstick and bra. No, Papa. Maybe you like new dress. No, Papa. I see what it is. They're coming. Well, hello, Gunner. Good afternoon, Mr. Holstrom. Come on right in here. Thank you. Hello, hello Gunner. Bill, here is Katie. Hello, Katie. Hello. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Holstrom, uh, is all right if I take Katie for a walk? Well. Yeah. <laughs> Katie, would you like to go for a walk? No. 
But if Mama wants I should go. Yeah. And Papa wants I should go. Well. Yeah. Then I go. <laughs> You are much more quiet than when I leave for school, Katie Holstrom. Perhaps it is because I do not have much to say. Oh, you think so? Well, perhaps it is because I'm so much more old and mature and not silly like schoolgirl with tight lips. Uh, you talk about Mildred, the girl I bring to your party. Certainly not. I do not even think of her. I do not even notice she wears tight lips. Then who? Oh, girl, you're standing girl with tight lips. <laughs> Katie, she's back to school. Oh? I sent her back to school. Oh? She is not a nice girl. She make fun. Make fun? Of what? Of you, Katie. Of house and, and clothes. And... But she do me a favor because she make me understand that you are a girl for me. Connor, all the time I think it is because you like things like tight dress and city girl. And... I like you, Katie. First kiss is the best. No, better than second. You're young for me now, but in two years you'll be 19 and, and I come back and, and then we'll be married. You will wait, Katie? You will wait? Oh, you are gonna. I will wait. I wait. I wait. I wait. I wait. Oh, I wait. I wait. Who is it? Me, Katie. May I come in? Yeah, I come in. How do you feel? Oh, just fine now, Stephen. No, I fixed some tea and toast. The toast got stuck. It's a little burned. I like it that way. Shall I pour you a cup? Not just now, thank you. How's the party going? It's over. Everyone's gone. Oh. Well, it's very nice that you're so concerned about me. What happened to you, Katie? Oh, just a little dizziness, I suppose. You never got dizzy before. Was it because of the party? Yeah, the party. And the excitement, I guess. Yeah, and the guests. Yeah, the guests. Well, they were worried, especially that one man. Which one? Mr. Lindstrom. Oh. Yeah, he told Dad he'd like to see you. He said he'll call back tomorrow. Yeah. Would you like to talk about it? I don't mind. You knew him? Yeah, I knew him. The big, blonde, handsome farm boy from Minnesota? Yeah. Mr. Lindstrom is a very important man today, the largest manufacturer of farm tractors in the world. I'm not surprised. What was he like when you knew him? Well... He was like a man who would one day be the largest manufacturer of farm tractors in the world. <laughs> I was very young, and I adored him. Hey, Dad. Oh, good morning, Katie. You ready, Dad? Oh, Steve, well, why don't you run along? Hmm? Run along? Well, you told me to pass up the school bus because you were going that way. Now you want me to run along? <laughs> All right. But you caught me at a very important point in Miss Holstrom's life. To be continued? To be continued. Bye, Katie. See you later, Katie. Oh, Mama and Papa, what are you doing up so late? Oh, be just talk. <laughs> uh, you have a good time, Gunner? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, why not? Young people should have good time. 
And you know, strong, healthy ones ought to start thinking about things like to sing and dance and festival and marriage. <laughs> but they did not make proposition. <laughs> oh, Mom and Papa. Yeah. Well, it's late. Uh, you would like for me to go? Oh, no. You have filled out good, Katie. You are a woman now. You are a 19-year-old woman. I love you, Katie Holstrom. Oh, Gunnar. I will give you the whole world. The world is when we are together. You will have beautiful home and fine clothes. I'm sure you will be good provider. But I cannot be good provider here. We will go anywhere you wish. But I do not even have the price of your train ticket. What are you saying, Gunnar? Katie, it's little opportunity here for a man like me. I want to do so much things for you. You're going away. Yeah, is necessary. When I come back with beautiful things for my wife, then we get married. Oh, Gunnar. I go to the big city and I come back soon with, with arms full of money and with heart full of you. You will wait, Katie. You will wait. Yeah, I will wait. <laughs> I will wait. I will wait. I will wait. From Gunnar? Uh, from Catalog Company. Oh. You have write this young man each day. And you have not heard from him these last few months. There is something wrong. Oh, Mama, there's nothing wrong. Gunnar will be home soon and then everything will be all right. strange way. You hold me as a man who's not the right. I do not have the right, Katie. The love, the desire I have, but not the right. You're going to marry another girl? No, Katie. I'm already married. She is what you want? You are what I want. Katie, I come back here only to say this. I want so much for a chance to be success in this world. And, and now it's what I've got. But I had to make a choice. For me, it was easy. I'd marry a rich girl, Mildred. Girl you bring to my birthday party. Girl who make fun of me. Yeah. This girl buys you, gonna. Yeah. She buys me. She buys me because I was for sale. Price was partner in big tractor company her father owns. Strange. I, I should be jealous of her, but I know you do not choose her. It is tractor I'm jealous of. Just as one day she will be. Goodbye, Gunnar. Goodbye, Katie. We're right, Gunnar. First kiss was the best. Now I no more have to wait. What is it, Millie? Mr. Lindstrom is here. Oh? He's waiting in the hall. Thank you. Hello, Gunnar. Hello, Katie. You're even more lovely than I imagined. I did not know you thought of me anymore. Every day of my life. Oh, Gunnar. I've been in Europe for the last five years. 
New factories, any new responsibilities. But it is what you wanted, isn't it? I've worked very hard for the business. It's given me everything I wanted, except you. I've left my wife, Katie. You're not married anymore. I've searched for you. I, I, I asked for you back home, but your mother wouldn't tell me where you were. And then this, this accidental meeting. I had no idea you were in this house. I'm governess to Mr. Morley's two children. You're a governess, Katie. Yeah, I like what I do. But you should have children of your own. I shall have someday. Katie, where have you been? I haven't seen you since yesterday. Hello, Danny. I just wanted to kiss you. Well, I'm available. <laughs> Danny, this is Mr. Lindstrom. Hello. Hello, Danny. Excuse me. Bye, Katie. Bye, Danny. He's the youngest one. He's a very fine boy. Yeah. Katie, I know I don't have the right to ask you this, but... Katie, where are you? Oh. Mr. Lindstrom. Congressman? Oh, Mr. Morley, they're beautiful. They'll wither in your hands. What? The flowers. Why don't you put them in water? Oh, yeah. Excuse me. You know, it's funny. What is? How you can have something in the palm of your hand, and it will wither and die if you don't take care of it. Sometimes it's sheer ignorance. You don't take care of it because you don't know how to. I don't believe that, Mr. Lindstrom. You can take care of anything that you really care for. I see you are anti-withering, Congressman. I am anti-waste, Mr. Lindstrom. Katie shouldn't be wasted. I suppose you are right. Here she has everything. Everything I was once able to give her. Yes. I had more to offer her then, didn't I? This time, Congressman, you say goodbye for me. He's gone. Yeah, I know. But what are you grinning at me for? Nothing. You sure you're feeling all right? Yeah. You've been acting very strangely ever since you fainted. You sure you didn't bump your head? No, I bumped my head. I bumped some sense into it. Well, Katie, what are you doing? Washing dishes. Well, where's Millie? Oh, I gave her the night off. Tonight? Yeah, her old school sweetheart is in town. Well, I don't know what you're trying to tell me, but would you mind saying it again? No. You know what I'm trying to say? What? That I'm glad it turned out this way. And what turned out this way? Everything. And I'm very happy here. Yeah? Yeah. Stay tuned for Here Come the Brides, coming up next on TV 39. She's country style, but city design. Got a smile that's sprinkled with sunshine. Look at the farmer's daughter. She'll perk up your morale. Her brand of charm is so disarming. Frowns turn upside down. We owe with that to Sweden. She's just what we've been needing. So glad the farmer's daughter came to town. 